Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg. In this video, I'm going to be answering the question of how to prepare client-supplied artwork in Lightburn, and then how to adapt that artwork so it shows up correctly on a round glass with a taper to it. And lastly, how much does a chimney cost? I'll be answering these questions and more, so stick around to the very end of the video. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for yet another video on the Laser Channel. Once we have all of the artwork prepped for this glass, we'll be heading over to the CO2 laser machine that I have just outside of the frame. But first, let's take a look at the client supplied artwork that they would like engraved on this glass. For that, we'll head into Lightburn right away. Inside Lightburn, I have the first of two images that will be going on the glass. The client would like one image on one side and then of course the second image on the opposite side of the glass. So this process will be the same for either of the images. This image here I have loaded in is a width of 10 inches. This is massively oversized just so that you can see it easier on the screen. And this was imported as a PNG file. And when I grab this image and I move it around, we'll see that the background is clear on here, but all the rest of this is still a picture file with either white or black. And when I zoom in, we're gonna see that I've got some of these jaggy edges. And actually for a customer supplied image, this is a pretty good image. Most of them are a lot lower quality than this. The first thing that I want to do is I want to convert this picture file over into an image that I could either cut or engrave. And by doing that, it's also going to smooth out a lot of those jagged edges. For this, I'll navigate to Tools, Trace Image. That'll bring up this other menu and I can scroll wheel in and I can check out some of those areas. And here we'll see this faint blue purple line. That is going to be the outline. And we'll see some of these jagged edges and we'll see that that purple line does not follow. The main thing that I have on this screen is I have selected delete the photo image after the tracing is complete. I'll click OK. This image could be ready to engrave on glass right away once it's properly sized. Now, what I found when I engrave on the glass, my image always looks narrow, even if I properly calibrated my rotary unit. And that's because if I grab this post-it note here and I grab a ruler and I measure the height and the width, it is perfectly square. However, when we start engraving onto something round and it starts taking the curve of that object, when I start curving or bending this post-it, it starts looking narrower the larger the image is or the more that it would wrap around the glass. So even though the engraving is going to show up correctly on the glass, the optical illusion is going to be is that that image is kind of scrunched down a little bit. I find on pint glasses, I like to widen the image out between five and 10%. That's also why I made this, inch, this image, excuse me, 10 inches wide so that when I highlight it, if I add 10% onto it, I'll only need one extra inch. To do this, I only want to adjust the width, so I'm going to un uncheck this padlock, and I'm going to take the width and type in 11. And of course, we'll see that it makes it stretched out sideways a little bit. It's going to look a little bit odd in light burn, but it will have the correct look when it's engraved on a glass. This, I could resize this so that proportionally it actually fits on this glass and I could engrave it as is. But this glass has something else going on with it too, and that is, of course, it's got a taper to both sides. And when engraving glass with the taper, as the glass tapers to a narrower diameter, so does the image. The image will get narrower the smaller the diameter. To overcome this, I'm going to hop into a different program and we're gonna change the perspective a little bit so that it will appear to be properly proportioned on this tapered glass. 
I have switched over to Photoshop, but there's a lot of programs on the market. Some of them are free, but feel free to use a program that works best for you. On the screen right now is the second image that'll be going on the glass. And I think this image is going to really illustrate when I change the perspective. Again, on the glass, it's the bottom portion of this image that's going to look like it's starting to neck down. So I'm going to make sure that I have that layer selected and I can go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective. And what I can do is grab this bottom corner here and I can drag that to the side and I can change the perspective. From my experience in trial and error, I like to use a taper between 2% and 5%. I already cheated and did a test engraving on this, and I found that a taper of 2% here works out perfectly. And again, there is no exact science to this. It's all by eye and their perception of what's going to look normal for you. And also, the size of the graphics is also going to play an impact on this. So know that when you're doing this for a client, you can go with your defaults that you use, or just make sure that you've got an extra glass on hand. I like the way that this looks, and I can lock that in place. Most glasses that I do will only have one image, so just any side that I place inside the engraving, I can hit the start button right away. But this project, because I'm doing a batch of about 20, there's two different ways that I could do that. The first one could be I can engrave the first image on the glass and do just that one image, go through all 20 of them, pick the glasses back up again and engrave the image on the other side, kind of eyeballing where I think the center line through the glass would be. I don't really like that method because I've got to handle the glass so many times and there's a lot of room for error. So the second method, the method that I'm going to be using is I measured the circumference of the glass. I divided that by half, so the travel would only be halfway around the glass. I draw that circumference line in the Lightburn software, and then I draw two vertical lines, and I do that as a test engraving. And I'll show you what that looks like in the software. Here I've got this funny looking eye. When I click on this vertical portion here, this is going to be a tool layer, so I'm using this as a layout. This is not actually going to do any engraving. And then I've got the top part of the eye. Now I have it tilted like that because this side is going to be the opening of the glass. So that orange tool line is going to be that half circumference, and then the two black lines should be the opposite marks. Now, in my rotary unit, it doesn't actually ride on this outer lip. It actually rides in just a little bit, which means there's a little bit of a fudge factor. So again, I did have to use a donor glass for this, but I was able to get the two lines on the back side and the front side to line up correctly. Once I have that, I can delete these two lines here, the top one and the bottom, leaving this tool line and I will import my graphics and I will place those, uh, the center of that graphic on the very ends of that. And that way I will be assured that the two images will be exactly opposite of one another. Here's what that looks like. Again, when I zoom in, we'll see that when I highlight this top object, this uh, image, it is directly in the center here on top of that endpoint, and when I zoom into the bottom here, and I click on this image, we'll see that it is at the very endpoint of this orange tool line. Next, I'm going to head over to the CO2 laser machine. I'm gonna show you the setup that I have, but not so much the settings that I'm using for the speed and power, and that's because in CO2 lasers, there's a large variation of the quality of the laser tube the power supply going to that uh, laser tube, the mirrors, how clean the mirrors are, what types of mirrors you have, the list goes on and on. So it's really one of those things, you'll have to find the settings that work for your particular machine that you're using. Here's a quick look at my CO2 laser setup. 
I've got it on this nice cart that I made. I put some nice caster wheels on the bottom here that swivel. And this allows me to easily move this around the shop, rotate it around to the back for any maintenance that I may need to do. The chiller that I'm running is an SNA CW5200. And this chiller is equipped with intelligent management, which means it will measure the air temperature and the humidity, calculate the dew point, and it will not allow the water lines or the laser tube to get condensation on them, which is a really bad thing. On top of the chiller unit, I have this piece of shelving, and this is a nice work platform for my laptop computer, which is connected with a USB cable, and that goes to the connection right here on my laser machine, and that cable has been working perfectly. When I move around and we take a look at the rotary unit in here, this is a very nice rotary unit. I just make sure that all of the hand knobs are properly adjusted for the height and the width. Here's a nice close up of that bubble level. We'll see that it's crowding the line on the right just a little bit. And that's because when I take this bubble level and I put it up on the gantry crane, it too is crowding to the right just a little bit. So what I see a lot of people doing when they put a bubble level on their work is they're just checking that level against, I call it earth level. And what you really need to do is make sure that the glass is level with your machine frame. So my machine frame is tilted just a little bit. For me, that's okay. Here's a quick look at my light burn settings. Again, the settings for the engraving are going to vary depending on your particular machine and your setup. This all looks good. I have the focus set, my chillers on, and I'm ready to hit the start button. The engraving is complete. The Cloud Ray CO2 laser machine made short work of this task. The last thing to do is to clean off this glass powder that's left on the top here. I could use just a regular towel for that, but the engraving is actually pretty deep into the glass. So to make sure that this is nice and smooth, I take some of this silicone carbide sandpaper. It's also commonly referred to as wet dry sandpaper because I like to get the sandpaper wet and I will actually pretty aggressively sand over the top of the engraving. And you can see that it's smoothing out everything very nicely. And I'll get the back side here. A quick wipe with the cloth and this is ready for the client. Looking straight down, I'll see that I've got the center line of the first image here and the center line of the second image there. And we'll see that those two are exactly opposite from one another. So that turned out great. And we'll take a close up look of these to check out the perspective to see if they look normal on a tapered round object. Here, if I tip the glass down a little bit, I get rid of some of this uh, glare that I've got going on but this looks pretty good. I like the way that this looks because the bottom isn't necking down too much and the width, because we are on this curved surface here, it looks like it's the correct proportion of the original graphic from the height to the width. When I flip this around to the other side here, of course, this is supposed to face the other direction and I'll get that fixed on the next one, but we'll see that even though Normally, this graphic would taper down. It looks like it's going straight down, and that's the look that I was trying to achieve. A couple minor adjustments, and I'll be ready to start this production on the glass. So, yep, I even show you the mistakes of having the mirrored output on my machine when it shouldn't do that. So, if you're running across little things when you make projects at home, I want you to know that you're not the only ones that make little minor adjustments to things as you're working on a project. In this video, I was able to answer the question of 
how to prepare an image using the Lightburn software, and then my method for adjusting the shape of the image so that it looks a little bit more normal when it's on a curved and tapered glass. And lastly, how much does a chimney cost? Nothing, it's on the house. Until next time, learn, create, and share.